Hey everybody, this is Ashley with Publish with Ashley, and I had a few questions on showing some advanced techniques in PowerPoint. So I thought I would show two things. One, how to create this cool, uh, unique shape that you can see on the screen, and the other, how to do what I call a wraparound cover, a wraparound spine uh, on a cover that I think kind of looks cool. It's an effect that I've been playing with and I want to just kind of show you how to do that. Through that, I'm going to show you probably a few techniques maybe you didn't know about in PowerPoint, maybe you did, um, but I thought it might be interesting for any of you who use PowerPoint to create low content books or your covers or anything else. So if you like things like that, please like and subscribe to my channel and I really appreciate it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to start with is how to make this cool shape. And there is a lot of ways you could change this up to make it unique and different, but I'm gonna show you the basics. So you can see, we're gonna start with actually something like this, this these circles, and I'm gonna start on a blank screen so we can start. So what you're going to do is you're actually going to get a shape. Um, I have my shapes in my drop down, but you can go to insert and click on shapes and we're gonna click on the oval and I'm going to hold a down shift so that it makes a circle, okay? If you hold down shift, it keeps the proportions the same so that the circle is a circle. I'm just gonna put it in the middle here to start off and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the color and outline. So my outline, I actually want to be black I have to click shape outline again, and I'm going to click the weight to three or maybe two, just let's do two and one fourth. And then I'm going to do my shape fill as in no fill. All right, now the first thing you're going to do is hit control D, okay? And what that does is you have a, a duplicate, control D does a duplicate. So you're gonna take the duplicate and drop it right back exactly on that other one. Okay, now what you're going to do is hit Control D nine times. So you have 11 circles, or you can do 10 or eight or whatever, but the example I had had 11. So I'm gonna hit this nine times because I already have two on there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it doesn't look like anything's there, <laughs> but there are 11 circles here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this, which will basically click on the top one. I'm going to press control, per press shift. So I have control and shift down and I'm going to make it bigger, okay? Now I'm going to click on the center one again, control shift and make it bigger, control shift. And I'm just gonna keep doing this until Oops, let me undo that one. Control shift, I let go of my shift button too quick. Okay, I'm just gonna keep doing this until I have all 11 out. Okay, I might have one more. Okay, that actually was the 11th, so I made the hole. So I'm gonna undo that one so I get my middle back. All right, so now I have them all here. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy this just so that you have, you can reuse this over and over again. Once you make it once, um, you can reuse it or you delete error things, you know, that sort of stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to click on the slide over here and I'm gonna hit Control D. Okay, so now I have two of them. Uh, and I'm going to work on this second one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select all of them. And once I have all of them selected, I can go and click on Appear Format Shape, and I'm going to get Edit Shape. I'm actually working in um, 365, so yours may look slightly different, but you can always, if I was confused as to where things are, I would actually type in the help bar, where is edit shape? And you can usually find that. Um, but in Office 365, shape format and edit shape. And then you can change the shape. Uh, so let's do this 32 star 
and you can kind of see I had the same as that other one. And so that all by itself looks pretty cool, but you can do some fun stuff with it. So what I learned is you can, I just, I'll have them all selected just because. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to select. It's right under find and replace. I'm gonna hit select. This is really cool. If you if you ever like lost a layer in PowerPoint, I have lost a layer all the time. So this finds all your layers, right? So now I can see all the different layers. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to hide every other layer, okay? And now what I'm going to do is I am going to shift it around oh I didn't think I missed a layer somewhere in there or these are too close hmm I'm not sure how I did that but we'll see how this turns out it's it's like a mandala in the sense that it can be whatever right so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to unhide all of my Ooh, look at that that is super fun so I can twist it so that's how it was originally and I can play with it ooh what do I like that, that ooh maybe that so you can see I, I actually made this one and it looks different because I had rotated this and played with it and uh, changed the weight um, but you can make something different um, that's actually really cool. I really like that. So I'm going to keep that. Uh, now, what you can do is if you're going to have something in color for color books, uh, you could actually, you know, select some of these or deselect some of these so that you could uh, change the color. And now I can select all of them. And I'm going to, or that didn't actually select all of them. Oh, I'm not selecting that one. So I'm going to hit control and grab that one too. And I'm going to change, oops, that's the font. I'm going to change the shape outline, the line, and, oh, I can make it, so you can just fiddle with it and make it colors. Let's see, and we'll go dark blue right there. And then I'm going to unhide things. The hiding just makes it easier so you can select and unselect. And because it wasn't a very bright color, um, you can't tell that the blue's in there. But you could make and do and fiddle with colors. I'm just trying to show you this. Um, now what you can do, like I said, you can, let's say, select them all. And you can start fiddling with um, editing the shape. So shape format, edit shape, change shape. Um, and you could just start playing. The hearts didn't look really good. Um, but you can just start playing with it and seeing what might look fun. Uh, or you can try and rotate them again, uh, or you can try different points. Oh, that's kind of fun. Uh, let's see, let's do another shape. Oh, that was what I had before, the 32. Uh, maybe this 8? Oh, that's kind of nice. You kind of see the colors. But anyway, you can see and you can fiddle with different things and see how it turns out and change the colors. You can you can just play with it. So I thought this was really fun to be able to do that. And I thought you might want to see this, how to find all the layers. Remember it's under find, um, you're gonna like find replace. You're actually gonna click on the select and selection pane. Um, I just deselected it, but there you go. So you can see everything. All right, now I just, I thought that was fun. So you can just start with this basic shape once you've made it and you can keep making fun shapes by changing and duplicating and it's like your own spiral graph if you remember those all right so the next technique I'm going to show you is I know this looks kind of funny like this um, but when it prints think of this as the book here let me open it okay so this is your book um, and this is going to be like a wraparound spine and I was playing with bevels because I thought it looked kind of neat to have this kind of beveled look um, it gives cover more texture and more interest and so that's kind of what I'm going to show you. Okay so we're going to go over to this new slide and we're going to insert a shape. Sorry mine I'm so used to mine being there but insert shapes and I use just a, a rectangle for this. Okay so I just made a big rectangle and I actually I overlapped it because I didn't like how the bevel edge looked on the top and so when you actually print it um, 
when it actually prints and you make the PDF cover, it's going to look like, see this is hanging over, but it's gonna look like this, it's gonna cut it off. Um, so that's why I actually had it overhang. Um, because when the PDF gets created, this all disappears. So you don't have to worry about that. But that's why I made this bigger. Okay, now the first thing you need to do with the shape is you need to shape outline. I always put no outline, just so you don't get a funny color. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to do design slide I'm not slide size, sorry, <laughs> format background there. And so now I'm working, I can see kind of all the things that are going on with the shape. All right, so now the first thing I'm going to do is actually click on the little paint can. And yours might come up with the paint can selected and I'm going to insert a picture or texture fill. This is what I had before, so I'm just gonna keep it, but um, you can, once you hit it, you can go insert and you can go from file and you can pick something. Um, so let's just show you picking it. So there I have this opened and I actually use this one right here. And there you go. Now it looks kind of squished. <laughs> so how we fix that is you hit text tile picture as texture so that it makes it the right size. Um, you can actually scale this different ways. Um, I think I fiddled with it so that I had 90 and 90% and you can move it over like say you're not happy with the fact this isn't exactly center let me center that um, as if it was the spine on my book and see how this like is over here and this is over there you can actually fiddle with these offsets so negative 20 will move it over that's probably too much so maybe negative 10 yeah, that looks about even right there. So you can fiddle with that. You can move it up and down. Um, you can just, Y will be the up and down, X will go right and left and you can just play with it. Okay, so once I have that, I have a nice pretty textured fill. We're gonna do that contouring. So how you do that is you actually go over to this uh, shape here. <laughs> the second one over from the paint can. What is that? A pentagon? Five pentagon? Um, and you go down here and click open 3D format. Okay. It's it'll probably will be closed for you unless you've been using it recently. So you're going to open it up. And what we're going to pick is we're going to pick the second one called relaxed inset. Okay. And then I, what I did is I fiddled with this and I kind of decided that somewhere in the 30 looked pretty good. So you can just hold down and decide what you like. Um, but I'm gonna type in 30 because that's kind of what I decided I liked. And I changed the height to be like eh, 10, 12, half of it. You can just kind of fiddle with it. Um, that seemed 12 seemed okay, 15. You can fiddle with it and move it up and down to see what works. And then I just did the same thing with this bottom bevel. I picked relaxed inset again, and then I changed it to 30 and 12. All right. And you get this cool shape and texture and you can play with it. Like I said, to make it different, make it your own. Uh, all I did here was I just inserted these, graphics behind it so you could see uh, what it looked like against something rather than just sitting on a blank page. But what you can also do to it, and here's something that's fun to do with anything, is you can add a shadow. Um, so you go over to, yet again, the Pentagon thing, shadow, and I just put outer. And it just gives a little outer edge. So let's insert. Um, we're going to do pictures from this device. It should still pull up that. We'll use this one again just so you can see how to do that. So I just inserted it and I'm gonna duplicate this. So control D and then move them over. And all I have to do, cause now they're in front, is I can just click on this and I can put bring to the front and it'll pop this in front. So that's what it's going to look like. So when you go big, so you can see not distracted by that. This is what my cover is gonna look like. And this is pretty big of a wraparound spine, so you can make it whatever width you think looks good. Um, but I like that it gives it kind of that old world textured feel. And it's just something 
that I thought was fun to play with. Uh, so you can play with it. But you can see how I pulled. I didn't like these edges on the top and bottom. I guess you could have them there, but I didn't like them. So that's why I made this bigger. Um, so you can do whatever you want. It's your book. But I just thought I would show you this technique. So I hope these were helpful for you and kind of gave you some creative and interesting ideas of things you can do. Uh, you can definitely, I think some of the great things are is you make a shape and then this technique of inserting a picture or a texture fill, that's really fun. That can You can do a lot of stuff with that. You can play around with shadowing. You can play around with the 3D offsets. Uh, you can, you know, play around with different things in PowerPoint. And then you can actually make some really cool shapes in PowerPoint just by um, kind of treating it like a spiral graph and changing things around. Uh, remember that where you can get the panes and see them all is in the select selection pane. And that's where you can see all your layers, which I just learned this. And <laughs> I think this is awesome because sometimes I lose my layers. Okay, I hope this was really helpful for you and gave you some interesting and unique ideas of things you can do in your books or for your books or create graphics for your books. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.